Welcome, well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today our guest is Patrick O'Hearn. He is a Catholic author and an editor, and he's written a book on Christian courtship, the role that it plays in the discernment process mm -hmm. and how we can learn from the saints who were married in this life. And the beautiful book is The Courtship of the Saints, How the Saints Met Their Spouses, and it's available at EWTNRC.com. And you can go to Patrick's website, PatrickRO'Hearn.com. Don't forget the R, PatrickRO'Hearn.com. Well, you know, I, this book is written for a time such as this, really, because, you know, just in our culture and beyond the hookup culture and what we see on a daily basis at the Pregnancy Medical Center with the wreckage of how we are as a culture and how, you know, we're just using people to get what we want and not loving and not being in committed relationships. And then what is the end game? Why am I meeting you? What is the purpose of this relationship? Am, am I to be married? And there are so many times I'll ask my client, well, how long you've been in a relationship with them? And even if they classify it as a relationship, yeah. they'll go, oh, we don't want to get married. I was mm -hmm. like, well, what, what is the point? What are we doing? And so for this beautiful book, if you have children or grandchildren, if you're a pastor and there's young adults in your parish and you want to encourage them to understand the meaning of courtship, of, of what that's about. Um, is, am I hunting a wife? Am I hunting a man? How do I do that? What is the purpose of this relationship? And I love the carefulness about to guard the hearts how nobody is to get hurt where we are just, we're just not in that orbit anymore. We, we yeah. hurt people, we use people, and when we're done, we just move on. And I just hear the word remember, that this book brings us into kind of what they say about the anamnesis, truly being there. Remember who you are. Remember the sanctity of marriage. Remember the blessedness of marriage. Remember what marriage is and what marriage does. And, and so we're being, we're recalling this mm. truth through the courtship of the saints and the instructions that's there. So plenty more to come, such an important matter, subject, reality, because the way marriage and family goes, the church goes and the world goes. We'll be right back, plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. We're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest again is Patrick O'Hearn. He is a Catholic author and an editor who has written a book on the Christian courtship, the role that it plays in the discernment process, and how we can learn from the saints who were married in this life. It's a beautiful book, The Courtship of the Saints, How the Saints Met Their Spouses, and it's available at EWTNRC.com, and you could go out to Patrick's website, PatrickRO'Hearn.com. <laughs> well, Patrick, love the book. Um, wished we would have had it even for our children, but we have it for our grandchildren, right. um, which is important. But tell our family a little bit about the format of the book, not just about the 25 saintly couples that you um, worked on. So I start the book with, uh, I wanted to define what courtship is. And so I, you know, I, I kind of the roots of courtship, where that term came from. And then I, I also define there's four stages of courtship by Father Rippinger, uh, which are friendship, uh, courtship itself, betrothal, engagement, and then marriage. And then, then I go into this, there's stories of 25 different saints. Now, not all of them are canonized saints. There is some, there's a lot of them. Some are saints that uh, produce saints. So I have uh, Blessed Solanus Casey's parents. Wow. And, uh, and then 
the, th the second part is it's counsel and prayer. So there's some advice in there that, uh, you know, people that are discerning things that they can do, practical steps. There's also some practical wisdom uh, for married couples, also things for um, how we can be apostles to singles. You know, we often forget about singles. And then I conclude with a lot of prayers. And uh, there's actually three prayers in there, several prayers, but the, the, one of the prayers that I really, I'm really, I love is a, it's three Hail Marys to say to Our Lady for purity, which is so lacking in our, in our times. And that prayer was given to me by uh, Father Andrew Apostoli, uh, who used to be on EWTN quite a bit. And so uh, I put that in there. So you said three Hail Marys, and then there's a particular prayer. There's that a, you say the three Hail yeah, Marys. So you, yeah, there's a particular prayer with those every morning uh, to pray those three Hail Marys uh, for purity, and uh, so that, that's in the back of the book. Yeah. Connecting with Our Lady is just so important, like you say, for purity. And we always look to the Lord, but yeah, the, the purity thing, thinking about Our Lady, praying in that way, really is something. And she helps and aids you and assists you. So very, very important. So why these 25? What's the, name some of them and what the variations are, are with them. Why these 25? Yeah. I wanted to start with, obviously going back, you know, to the biblical time. So yeah. I wanted to include, uh, obviously, Joseph and Mary. You know, they're, they're huge. And, you know, I use private revelation for that. You know, Blessed Anne, Catherine Emmerich, and Mary of Agrita, both who are, are approved by the church. And I have a couple, t you know, my, one of my favorite ones is uh, Tobi Tobias and uh, Sarah with the angel Raphael, mm -hmm. just to show how the, the, the archangels and the saints intercede. So a few biblical stories. And then I also include some of my favorite ones, Louis and Zelie Martin, uh, the parents of St. Therese. And then I try to look for some lesser known ones. Uh, there was a venerable uh, Vittaro Trancinelli. He, was, uh, he adopted seven children. Uh, he was a, a medical surgeon. And uh, his story is fascinating. Also, St. Gianna Mola. So I kind of just, I try to cover, and then I also covered some martyred saints in there. St. Thomas More's marriage, and, uh, and then Blessed Franz Joggenstager, and then a few, um, so I'm kind of, a couple other ones that I really, I was really yeah. um, focused on was a couple saints that experienced betrayal, you know, in terms of their spouse. So um, there's one, uh, Blessed Elizabeth uh, Mora and her husband, uh, cheated on her and then he abandoned the family. So I wanted to give, you know, just the whole spectrum of marriage that, you know, all couples experience. They can look to these saints to see, not only just, obviously they can relate, identify with the suffering, but it can also give them hope. Yeah, you, you know, I, I asked you, you know, did you have any saints or holy souls in the book that, you know, didn't do courtship well or, you know, failed in the area of chastity? Because it's just, it's so important. For our viewers, I bet the majority of which may not have done it correctly, um, that, that, that there's hope, that there's ability to change. Wasn't that Joggenstarter or the yeah, name mm -hmm, you said? Yeah. What was his story? Yeah, Blessed Franz Joggenstarter, you know, he, he fathered a child out of wedlock and then he kind of had a conversion and then he met, and then he fell in love with his, um, his now his wife who is uh, Francesca mm -hmm. and then he was en ended up being uh, he, he was beheaded because he refused to uh, enlist in, you know, with the Nazis in, in Austria. And so his story was just, just a powerful story. Him and his wife ended up having three children. And at his, um, you know, his beatification, his wife was present. She was 94 years old, you know, with the three, child, three daughters and then the one daughter he fathered out of wedlock. And so not, we all, often we don't get a second chance to make a first impression mm -hmm. on someone. But his, the fact that his wife you know, just embraced him and, 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 and didn't wow. uh, hold his, you know, his past failings uh, with another woman. And I, I think it's, it's a lesson for, you know, for many couples today, you know, our courtships, they might get messy sometimes, but God is merciful. Yes. Yeah, and, and what Amen. the beautiful part about is not how we start, it's how we finish. And to, so that we know that it is a life of, a virtuous life of mercy and grace and how we get to work that out. And I loved how you did in the stages, how you kind of gave them a timeline, you know, because what's the end game? How long do we date for? Now, Mr. Pinto and I, we dated for six years. That yeah, was a long time. We actually dated like five years and the last year was courtship. Um, it was, but, but it it was, was because we had, a, we had right. a radical conversion and then we understood, you know, self donation, total donation. What does the Lord really want? We finally got in touch. Better you get in touch with it right from the beginning. We didn't. But when we did, we understood it was not dating anymore. This was like, we know why we're together. We know how we want to please the Lord in it. Yeah. 
But the importance of Father Rippinger, how he even gave it a timeline, right? Explain the importance of that. Yeah. Yes, you know, he, you know, and I've heard many, many priests have said this too, like, you know, after a year of courting someone, if, if, if you don't know you're going to be called to marry them, you're kind of wasting that person's time. And so Father Rippinger, you know, in these four stages, you know, the first stage, friendship, it's, you know, three to six months. And then we move into um, uh, courtship, which is three to six, and then the betrothal, about three to six months. So you're looking at, you know, at the short term, you know, about nine months, anywhere from nine to 18 months window. And I think it's, it's really important, be, again, because you want to make sure, you know, you can discern forever, and, 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 and that's not good either. Or you can be, you know, three months and it, jump into a marriage too quickly. So I think that having some kind of set time, and then there's certain set rules that are important during those stages and, and you're you're trying to acquire different virtues so during the friendship stage you're looking at your most important question is does this person have virtue and then you move into you know the courtship phase is you're trying to see does this person can they can they deny themselves mm -hmm. and then the betrothal it's a period of moderation and then finally marriage you know which is god willing you know it's for life and so these are all different uh, practical tools that keep us uh, you know on that straight road to heaven yeah. Right, and you're you're trying to discern and see who that who is inside of that person, not just the physical part of it, and you know because you have no idea is is he patient, is he kind, does he suffer long, um, how you know can he deny himself, you know, or is it just all about me and I have to have all my needs met, yeah. you know, because then that person is showing you a side of himself and that it might not be so attractive. Right? You know, my son-in-law, Nathan, just a fine man who courted uh, Rebecca, one of my daughters, and, uh, you know, really did it right and discerning and so on. And I said, what have you learned now after, you know, th these number of years that you've been married? And he said, I would have asked the question, can I see myself, can I see her as a mother? Does she want to be a mother? Would she be a good mother? And I should have, I want, I should have had that more insight. They have eight children now. And, uh, you know, that that's something you need to think about. Do, do you want children? And, you know, what's your hope in that area? Because that's central to what it means to be married. Yeah, I mean, I think physical beauty, you know, it can blind us. And that's in, in this book, you know, I, there is several stories where saints fell in love at, love at first sight. Yes. Yeah. But I also put stories where it took years, you mm -hmm. know, for them to kind of discern if this was their calling. And I think to, to you know, that that's a, a great point is though to ask the deeper questions. You know, we, we talk about, you know, before the show, we were talking about, you know, when you, when you become a priest, you're going to spend about eight years uh, in discernment and, right. you know, for a, a nun, 10 years. And it's such a short window that you have when you're going to find your spouse. But in, and often we want to make little shortcuts. And, but if we can just sacrifice that pleasure and to go deeper into the virtue, because, you know, uh, Fulton Sheen said that, you know, beauty in a woman and strength in a man, they serve as a purpose of allurement. They're like the frosting on the cake. Right. Mm -hmm. They get deeper. And I think that that's what they are. Like God uses that attraction. You ought to be attracted to your spouse. But at the end of the day, yeah. you, want to, you want to be attracted even more so to their soul. Yeah. Right, because the Word of God tells us that charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And you want to know that. Is, is she, does she fear God? And that, how is it manifesting itself in the virtues of her life? Or is she full of fear? Is she anxious? Does she worry about this? Because, you know, as now, so then kind of thing, if you're not um, having the formation of your spiritual life, being before the Lord and having him say to you, I had this happen in adoration, and Jesus hasn't stopped saying this to me. He says, for you, I want to decrease your vices and increase your virtues, right? And that's, that's for the rest of my living life until the day I die. But that's what my groom, my Lord, my lover says to me. And then it works and manifests itself out in my relationship with Jim, in my patience, in my fortitude, in the way of who I am um, as, as a woman and a wife and a mother and ultimately the daughter of Jesus, right? And, and our spouse being the son of God and that we walk up alongside of each other and we endure all the crosses that come our way in this marital journey and in our family. Walking alongside each other, that term equally yoked, 
That's what the discernment process is about, and then living that out, right? What, what does that mean to be equally yoked, to understand it, to clarify that in this? You know, I'm after holiness of life. You know, what is holiness, you might say? And then, because you don't want to be unequally yoked. You'll learn about that as you go on, but do we have a common focus here? Yeah. And, and you know, and there were some saints, even um, their names, I, I always butcher their last name, uh, <laughs> Luigi and Maria Quattrenco. They were actually the first beatified couple before the Martins were. And uh, Luigi mm -hmm. was, uh, he wasn't very as devout as his wife, but he came to be that way. And, you know, obviously it, the ideal is when you marry, meet someone, you're both on fire for the faith, and, you know, that's, that's the goal. But th sometimes that other spouse, it's, they're going to need a little work. Yeah. And so, uh, but those are things, you know, obviously there's red flags, you know, before you get married. You know, if, this, if your spouse is not willing to, like, say a rosary with you or, mm -hmm. you know, if, if they're already, there's some resistance then. I mean, that's just, that's something to really, you have to ponder that. Like, am I, am I willing to, the fact that my spouse won't pray with me, uh, you know, that's, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I love the uh, Tobias and Sarah story. And, uh, you know, she had been married like numerous times, right? Seven times. Seven times. Never consummated yeah. because of this demon that was attacking, you know, these guys or this relationship. And, uh, of course, he's accompanied uh, by an angel, the archangel, Raphael. And we'll share a little bit about angels and about accompaniments by saints. But I just want to say again that that famous portion of scripture, um, I think it's Tobit 8, 4 through 8, it's in there, that before he consummates this marital relationship, and indeed the father thought he might wind up dying just like all the other guys, he says, Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but because of a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me. Call down your mercy on her and allow us to live together to a happy old age. Amen. I mean, every Catholic young boy and girl should know that prayer. Because you know, there's so much we can share about marriage, but it's, oh, I, 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 I'm attracted to a woman. I might be allured by her beauty, and I think it's good to, to have an attraction. But I take it for a noble purpose. I think this is, this is the one, virtuous woman here, and we're trying to discern this. Come, come upon us, Lord, because Satan hates marriage and he will hate our relationship. And, and we need you to, they're on their knees before they go to bed, praying it, and God blesses them and the power of that demon is finally broken. And I've really found in my relationship with Joy, breaking the powers, demonic powers with my wife in prayer every day. N not that I always focus on being oppressed, but I have in the past some, and I've gone to priests, I've gone to other people. You can go to the Pope, but sometimes your wife can deliver you far quicker than any of them because we've made a commitment, we've made a pledge. So I say, Joy, you know, I feel like I'm oppressed by, you know, something. Joy just lays hands, bang, it goes. And even sometimes I've said, hmm, I don't know about that, but she really has some power over me. Yeah, we have power over one another to deliver one another from demons and to live a happy, married life to our old age. So if we just knew this going in to discernment, your thoughts? Yeah, and I have a story in there. Um, blessed Jacopone, you know, he's credited with writing the uh, Stabat Mater. Very, right. he was a lawyer and uh, very not religious. And I, uh, his his wife's name escapes me, but yeah. she actually um, she died suddenly from a tragic accident. And when she died, they found that she had a hair shirt on, and it was she was praying for her husband's conversion. Mm. And I, I, I postulate that I, I think even at their vows, like she was offering herself up mm. for her husband's conversion and he yeah. became a Franciscan after, after he died. But I think the importance of sacrificing for your spouse, you know, there's so many things that we can do, you know, praying for them, offering fasting and uh, just, you know, um, and another thing, you know, opening the channel of God's grace, you know, with St. Rita and her husband, Paola, mm. they weren't able to have children right away. And it was her husband, he was a very, kind of a wicked man, very ver verbally abusive. And after he had his conversion, he started praying to God. God then blessed them with children. I think that there's so many things like, you know, not that God's gonna, if we're, you know, we're um, living virtuous, he's gonna bless us with all these children. No, it may not happen that way, but the more we are living th his way, the more he does, you know, he opens those channels mm -hmm. and uh, for children, for grace. and That's right, and that's true. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. We're holding you over for the final segment. Um, the courtship of the saints. You need to get that, EWTNRC.com. Uh, you can find it 
there. Visit Patrick O'Hearn's website, patrickroherne.com. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we're speaking with Patrick and about this beautiful book, The, Courtier, the Courtship of the Saints. Now, there are 25 saints. Why don't you tell our family which one was your favorite? I do like uh, St. Louis and Zelie Martin. They're my favorite one uh, just because of the parents of St. Therese and their, you know, and their marriage story. But I also was able to uh, interview uh, St. Gianna's uh, daughter, yeah. and I would say her, her parents' story uh, is... It's just, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how long, were they, how long were they in courtship with one yeah. another? So they met each other um, five years before they started courting. And uh, Gianna's uh, father, they met each other um, at a, it was f first at a hospital, and then um, they met at another occasion. But it wasn't until, uh, the, sorry, there's a priest's first mass that they really fell in love. And Gianna had just recently gone to Lourdes and was praying a novena. Because at one point she was thinking about becoming a missionary in Brazil. And so she was really torn. Do I go join my brother in Brazil? And uh, her priest, her spiritual director advised her, you know, you should pursue the vocation of marriage. And at that, at that priest's first mass, um, Pietro, who was around 42 at the time, he saw her and he was just blown away by her reverence and her smile. Because when they first met each other the previous five years, it was just a quick glances mm. and, it, and he thought she was very serious but at that moment it was like the floodgates of heaven opened up mm -hmm. and they realized that they were meant for each other beautiful how long did he live without her her death how long did he live how did he manage that having lived yeah. with a, a saint such love there to persevere on yeah so uh, they were they lived 48 years so he was a, he was a widower uh, for 48 years, uh -huh. and then they were married only six and a half years. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm th I was reflecting on that today. You know, I'm, I'm 39 years old, and Gianna was 39 too. I mean, and I, you just realize the saints. You know, the mm -hmm. time that they had on earth, it was so quick, and they but they maximized it. And boy, that's an important lesson. You know, as I shared, my father lost his wife. My mother, she was 42 years old, lived for a long time without her, and that that's a real testimony in and of itself, isn't it? That we spoke in the first show about, you know, your spouse isn't the totality. You're not looking for her, you know, to, to give you. It's the Lord. So I guess these people are able, after losing their love like that physically, to persevere on because mm -hmm. Christ truly is first in their marriage and in their lives. Yeah. You know, um, St. Gianna's daughter was saying that, you know, they were one body and one soul. And, and you know, obviously throughout his life, you know, um, her, Pietro would, uh, you know, would seek his wife's prayers. And they just... Even though she was gone, she, she also wasn't. You know, she lived on and, and their children. And, you know, I hope someday that he becomes a saint. But that, that love is, you know, I think his, it was his love for God. And he realized, one, it took him many years to realize, why did God take my mm. wife? Wouldn't she have been more helpful to my children? And he, he came to this agreement that, he came to this belief, that, this insight from God that, you know, God wanted Gianna for more people, to be a mm. mother to many and, mm. and not just his children. Mm -hmm. you know? Patrick, thank you so much for this gift uh, to the church, the courtship of the saints, how the saints met their spouses. We so appreciate it. This will really work to help heal the church and help her to recall mm -hmm. the greatness of the sanctity and dignity of marriage. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. So go to EW10RC.com, get the book Courtship of the Saints by Patrick O'Hearn. It's a great book for those discerning marriage. It's a great book for parents and grandparents to help our children, to help our grandchildren, to understand what marriage is and what marriage does and how you try to discern the right mate for you to spend your life with here on earth and to make them holy as God is holy by his grace and power. You're an important part of this EW10 family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.